Welcome back, everybody, to the Wind Waker NG playthrough. This is part 20, the big 2-0. And uh, here we are at this uh, this place I can already tell is going to be very annoying. Uh, okay, right off the bat, we're getting destroyed. So we got these, uh, these fancy laser guys. Mm, slightly different from the original laser guys in that one room. But, uh, yeah, they don't seem to ever stop. And then, then this guy decided to uh, annoy me. Birds in video games! And then I remembered, oh yeah, I could totally use my arrows while uh, Z targeting, L targeting, whatever it's called. I think it, I think in this game it's ZL targeting, but anyway, hey, uh, that's both. Weird. Anyway, so yeah, then I was like, uh, oh, what if I shoot at these guys? Then I was like, oh, they have an arrow over them. Hmm. That's how you get rid of those jerks. Alright, so I got a ZL target them, and, uh, oh, pfft. came to that skidding stop, because I said, oh, arrows, I need those, ah, well, that's a different one. I don't know what I was running away for initially, but, um, yeah, I really need to run past this, here we go, back to the, uh, the good old, what, um, need to get a little bit of a different angle here, oh, health, yay. You know me, I'm always very OCD about my health and my magic, and it's not full. Look at that, I got like a small, a smidgen of my magic is gone. Oh, and of course these, uh, these regular jerks are here. Oh, birds and video games. <laughs> take that. Oh yeah, I lost my golden feather from the first dude that I killed. Ah, all right. Getting past that, oh, there it is. Oh, hey, that's right, this is the, uh, the final loot before the boss. So of course this is going to have some good stuff in it. All right, send me good stuff. I totally missed those arrows, which was uh, inconvenient and unfortunate. But I guess it's not super inconvenient, considering what happens in this boss battle. But uh, we'll get there when we get there. Whoa. Now that looks really cool. All right. He's talking in the weirdo language, but it's coming out normal. Maybe Link understands it now? Who knows? Oh. Well. That's a hand. That appears to be another hand. Huh. And, uh, that is just genuinely scary. Oh my. It's Andros! Just, just saying. Alright, so this boss battle is incredibly simple. Uh, you got a ZL target. The, uh, the hands while they're open and exposing the little eyes, you gotta hit them twice each. And then once you've done that, then you can attack the head. You gotta hit the eyes first. Unfortunately, at the moment, I didn't realize that. And if you take too long, he shoots a lot of fireballs at you. Um, but yeah, then the hands go out of commission for a short time. You only get a certain amount of time to shoot out those eyes, otherwise, you're in big trouble. I love how I did that as I was running. <laughs> On the go bomb throwing. Yeah, I was a little confused as to what the walkthrough was telling me. Uh, I don't remember it saying something about shooting out the eyes. Maybe I missed or forgot that part. But yeah, there I go, shooting the eyes. But yeah, this is kind of like the Armos Knights. Uh, as you can tell, I threw a bomb at him. Yeah, at a certain point, he does open his mouth. That's after you shoot his eyes out twice. Here we go. Then you gotta shoot a bomb into his mouth. Kind of looks like it goes up his nose. Boom, and uh, and that counts as one full hit. All right, just got to do that a couple more times. Easy enough. Now, the you know the walkthrough actually made the uh, the resemblance of this boss to Andros. I I honestly wouldn't have thought that at first. I would have thought of the hand guys from the pyramid in uh, Super Mario 64. Uh oh, wee! Got to show off and look fancy while doing that. All right, one more shot. Uh, oh, uh oh, 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 that. Oh, well, you know, that's what I get for showing off. Take that. Okay, crazy eye guy. Oh, there we go. Boom. And, uh, now we're on our final hit because you know Nintendo always works in threes. Oh, these guys are looking to give me the clap. What the? Oh yeah. Okay, so that's why the arrows wasn't really a problem. This guy is so nice that when you run out of arrows or bombs, he will shoot them out of his nostrils. And uh, then you get free arrows, pretty much. It's awfully nice of him. 
But yeah, if that's any indication in what he said in the beginning of this fight, this guy's not actually like a bad guy or anything. He's basically just here to test, you know, the person that's, uh, that's doing the whole Tower of the Gods thing. You know, he doesn't really want to kill you or, or anything. But, uh, oh, this was super unfortunate and very annoying. Yeah, you don't want to be down here in this holographic area because you'll be constantly electrocuted. And then, of course, as I get back up, this guy shoots me back down. So that was really annoying, and I took way too many hits from that. Yeah, I wanted to make sure I was nice and far away from that from now on. Oh, okay. How nice of him. Okay. Final test. What a nice final test, you know? It's not often that uh, you get a, a boss or just a gen general enemy that uh, will give you the stuff that you need to actually beat him. Oh god, that was super close. Now, I don't know what's happening here. I can shoot the head and the hand at the same time, so I was a little confused there. I didn't know if I was supposed to hit the hand first, or if that was just some sort of distraction, maybe? No, no, it was a distraction? No, maybe? I don't know. I guess not. Alright, there we go. And that's our third hit. Good night, sweet prince. Alright, that was a lot of speech for those few words. It's like almost guaranteed that this is Japanese now. Yeah, I wasn't sitting around waiting for him to just talk the whole time. Oh! Oh! Big lasery beams. But uh, it actually turns out it's a portal. Yay! Sparkly purple portal to take us to the place that we actually need to go to finish this tower. The tower with no stairs. And then that guy's like, oh, right. Yeah, here's your prize. Ta-da! All right. Now what are we up to? Ten? One. Oh, shoot. All right. I see how it is. So this is kind of a, a cool little uh, cutscene. Actually, oh, no. I think that happens every time at the end of the boss battles when you teleport out of there. That's right. I was thinking of the um, the uh, fairy fountain places. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, ten. Sweet. Alright. Lots and lots of health for us to get hit with. Yay! Alright, so now we have to ring this bell, and uh, fans of Majora's Mask won't like this noise. Yeah, it's almost like they ripped it straight from the game. It just sounds like the clock tower. And I say that like I actually played the games or something. No, I actually haven't. Uh, I think the only thing that I actually got out of it was that one time I was genuinely curious to see what happens at the end of the final day. And uh, it's pretty freaky. And uh, the sound of those bells will never be able to be unheard by my ears. Alright, so now we got a glowy spot in the water. <coughs> right outside the tower. Eh? Dot dot dot. Oh! Alright, sounds good. Let's do it. I just said let's do it. What is this guy, deaf? <sighs> Man. King Red Lines. He can talk, but he just can't listen. Alright, well, he doesn't really need to listen because Link never talks, so I guess that works out for him. So under the water we go. You know, Link didn't bring his scuba gear, unfortunately, so he's kind of. He's kind of struggling to hold his breath. Oh no! Turns out uh, he can actually breathe under here somehow. Just look at his face. He's like, "What the heck is happening?" All right, we're just gonna roll with this. <laughs> All right. So down this magical beam of golden light, and uh, now we're just kind of floating out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, what is this? Looks to me like some sort of castle. A castle, I say! What kind of castle could it be? I don't know, but uh, I'm sure a number of Zelda fans will find this place oddly familiar. Yeah, I might as well say it. we're at Hyrule Castle. In the middle of Hyrule. You know, the place where cool stuff happened in the Ocarina of Time. Actually, I don't know my geography, so I don't know if it's actually in the middle of Hyrule, but whatever. I'm wondering where we are. Uh, I totally just told everybody. All right. 
All right. I figured, you know, I might as well just go ahead and say it because, hey, you know, I figured a number of people watching this would probably already know, and, you know, what's the point? But anyway, I thought that this would be an as useful a time as any to make use of the uh, first person mode because this is so friggin' cool. Unfortunately, it stopped here momentarily, but whoa, hello. That's a. Uh, that's a moblin. He's not moving. Apparently the sepia tone that's going on here causes them to freeze. So anytime, you know, I just kind of do a video or anything, I'll just put sepia tone over it and all the enemies will just stop moving. Not really, though. Okay, so now we're inside of the uh, the castle here. And uh, you know, look at that guy. Awfully freaky. Looking around. Very, very regal royal detailed castle in here. And a statue of perhaps the legendary hero of time? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. I had to get like uh, like up in front of him because I just had to see if you could see his face. Oh, okay. Item. More like a weapon, but okay. <clears throat> yeah, of course, it wouldn't be a Zelda game without puzzles, now would it? Anyway, so we gotta we gotta puzzle, do, do puzzling things, and uh, figure out how to get to the thing that we need. So uh, it's actually pretty simple, although I was a smidge confused at first. I thought I had to push those little triangles on the ground. Turns out you gotta move these humongous triangular blocks very slowly from from one side. Just kind of yeah, you go. All right, and just kind of grab them, and spin them around, and then. Maneuver them. No, we don't want to slide across the uh, wall of that thing. Certainly not. Just kind of oh, push it, push it real good, and slide. Uh, oh, okay. Actually, confused myself there. <laughs> a bit surprised how I did that. All right, now I gotta just do that two more times. So I figured I might as well speed that up because uh, the first one took way, way, way too long. Okay, that's number two, and uh, yeah, I see I'm getting the hang of this. It's, uh, it's a lot simpler than you'd imagine, looking looking at how I'm doing it. Trapped myself in there, unfortunately, but uh, hey, I completed the puzzle, and uh, now I'm not trapped. Oh, and that actually looks a lot cooler with Link right in the middle of that Triforce. All right, so glowy Triforce puzzle complete, and magically, the statue moves. Uh, oh! Yeah, that was definitely one of the most important do 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 do's that we're ever gonna get in this entire game. But yeah, I was like, ah, oh, can you see his face or not? It's kind of gonna get as close as I possibly can. But no, I don't think you can actually see his face. Eh, sorta. This is not very super detailed or anything. Kind of looks like uh, Link's bigger brother, maybe. You know, who knows who that guy is? Let's be honest here. All right. So down these stairs we go into this hidden basement. Alright, oh. I was gonna say, I actually confused myself that I was in first person mode. What am I doing? Oh. So yeah, that is the King of Red Lions talking to us. As uh, somebody had mentioned before when I was in the Dragon Roost Cavern. Yeah. It's the only sword that can banish Ganon. Okay. Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's slowly walk over there. It's gonna make it nice and epic. Good job, me. Good job on that. Here we go. Oh, man. Oh! It's actually pulling out. Oh. Well, I noticed that, though, you know, Link's, Link's always on the ball. But uh, these statues apparently come alive and, in a strange show of respect, lower their swords and then glowy stuff happens. Ah! Link's like, where's my sunglasses? And then with that magical glowy stuff, once we pull the sword out of its uh, sheath there, then uh, sepia tone's gone. Everything's back to nice, full color. Ah, that sure does feel good on my eyes. But uh, the unfortunate thing about that is that uh, since there's no sepia tone to stop these guys from moving, now these guys move and if that's any indication I gotta fight them 
But now I got this fancy new sword. Look at this. It's got a blue hilt and everything. Oh! It's so fancy looking. Wee! Woo! Yeah. Hiya! Oh! I am one with this sword! I have the power! I miss He Man. You got the Master Sword! The legendary blade of the power to prevail evil. One wheel out of my legendary hero himself. Whoa! <laughs> Link's just like, this thing is pretty cool, I guess. Alrighty then, and uh, now we should get to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, I thought there was going to be another small cutscene here. Turns out there's not. But uh, the walkthrough had told me that this was as good a time as any to look around at the stained glass behind these statues. As you can see, some uh, seven pretty cool stained glass portraits. Uh, I see one is blue, one's red, and uh, one is green. Although, yeah, it took me a little, it took me a moment to actually get like a good camera angle. There we go. We can see that person, and then, uh, huh? Wonder who that green person is? Yeah, over there on the left. It kind of reminds me of a song. You know, I think it goes do 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 do. All right, before I get carried away, yeah, these are the stained glass portraits of all the seven sages from Ocarina of Time. Blah, blah, blah. I know. <laughs> Jerking everybody around for a while, but yeah, you know, just, there you go. That's the whole secret behind that. I thought it was a cool, you know, little add-in, little reference to uh, previous games, although most of this game is a reference to the previous games, like particularly Ocarina of Time. But hey, now that's all, oh, that's all closed up now, and now I gotta do some fighting. And since there's a lot of dudes, and that fighting took me a long time, I figured, you know, it'd be a lot more fun just to just speed this all up. I bet that'd make this so much more entertaining, rather than having to sit through literally 10 minutes of me running around and fighting these guys, because it took me 10 minutes. Just a, just a little bit of trivia there. All right, so, uh, yeah, the thingy Bobby was telling me I should totally use my grappling hook and, uh, you know, whip these guys with it and get uh, some skull necklaces and uh, knight's crests off of these guys because they're going to be, you know, slightly important. Not like super important, but definitely useful. And uh, I think I bit off a little more than I could chew here. Those four guys turned into two, luckily. And, uh, yeah, the, the annoying thing about the Dark Nuts is that you can't steal the Knight's Crest off of them unless their helmet is off. Yeah, that's definitely annoying. There we go. Getting those off of that guy. Beat him up. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, okay. As you can probably tell, I wanted that to stop, but I wouldn't, so I wanted to get nice and far away from that at the very least. It seemed like the, that was the only thing that I could do. Blow this guy up. Alright, beat him up. Of course he just, that's the only thing that stays up on him is the friggin' helmet. He just picked up the, the, the Moblin's weapon and just started using it. Wow, this guy's proficient in like every single weapon, isn't he? Yeah, those Dark Nuts, man, they are something else. And this guy's a huge troll. He dropped his monster ball thing and broke it. And this, of course, the Knight's Crest lands on a space that I can't land on or jump up on him. I just couldn't get it, alright? It was annoying. Jeez. But yeah, if you couldn't tell, there's some sort of... Oh my god, that noise. Some some kind of weird electric fence going on there that uh, forbids us from leaving. Surprisingly, we can't leave until we finish beating up all of these guys. Beat these guys up. But yeah, that glitch was uh, pretty annoying, I must say. This friggin' sword just getting stuck under the, the statue. Wee! Just gotta go down there and get all the free stuff that I'm entitled to. <laughs> Wee! I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I can't find any dudes. Ah, <laughs> Alright, there they are. And here's the last two guys. One Dark Nut, one Moblin, and then we are done. Lynn. Oh, that was a terrible rhyme. Anyway. Yeah, that was super delayed. I was just like waiting for that to happen. Alright. So now we can leave uh, both of those doors, oddly enough. Oh my god. Please stop! 
Oh, then I was like, oh, I'm gonna leave, but wait a minute, I just remembered that little cutscene showed that two doors were being opened, so let's go all the way back here, past the horrible noise, and see what is actually behind this back door. Do 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 do. Well, surprisingly, it's another exit out of the castle slash, en slash entrance. And wow, look at that. A huge field. Yeah, that's the field that, uh, you know, come from Hyrule Field. Ow. All right. We've got some sort of uh, barrier here. This, this is the world border here. Unfortunately, we can't go anywhere past that. That is pretty unfortunate. I would have loved to just... Wouldn't that be insane? Like, if you could just... Oh, my God. Just the the amount of time that it would take you to actually do this game. Although, I mean, not, not saying that it would be, like, an actual crucial part. But it would be super cool if they just completely rendered the entirety of Ocarina of Time. And that you just run around and, just, you know... Like, nothing would be happening there. You know, there's, like, no enemies, no NPCs or anything. You just walk around wherever you want to. That would be the most insane insanity ever. All right, well, King of Red Lines is telling me to hurry up. So let's hurry up. Whee! Off we go. Gotta go save uh, Errol. But yeah, that idea that I just had, you know, it kind of reminds me of Generation 2, you know, when they first would do that thing where, you know, you'd um, beat all the, the Johto gyms and then, oh, hey, I can go to Kanto, you know, Hey, you know, Kanto's mostly the same as it was before. It's a little bit scaled down, but uh, it's uh, mostly what I remember. That would be pretty neat if that was also the case here. Hey, I can go in Hyrule Field, and Fire Mountain, and Gerudo Valley, and, and uh, all those other places. Just thinking of places off the top of my head that I know. All right. So now we're going to just uh, do some nice, relaxing... Uh, sailing because uh, we can do that and we're gonna go get a couple of treasures actually and in the meantime well I'm very slowly going inside of here what is this like nine I reef or something I can't even looks like nine all right might as well read that uh, fancy information stuff okay so while I get this silver rupee <laughs> spoiled um, the tingle tuner item I think I mentioned this before uh, and the original has been replaced with an item called the Tingle Bottle. The bottle is used to send messages to the game's Miiverse community. If players are in need of help, players then receive replies containing hints as to current objectives. Or you receive DARPs. Uh, using the Picto Box item in the game, players are able to take screenshots, including self-portraits. Hey, selfies! Switching between happy, sad, and surprised facial expressions for Link. They can then post these screenshots to Miiverse for other players to see. Yeah, I saw a number of those. <laughs> they were extra, extra goofy, some of them. Uh, the developers tuned the gameplay to make it less tedious. Yay! They're making it easier on me. Yeah, because, you know, I have literally uh, no aptitude when it comes to playing Zelda games. So making it nice and easy is perfect for me. Uh, after completing the Dragon Roost Cavern Dungeon, <gasps> what's that? Spoiler! Players are able to purchase the Swift Sail at the auction house on Windfall Island. The Red Sail operates 50% more quickly than the regular sail. The Swift Sail automatically changes the direction of the wind so the player can sail at full speed all the time without doing so manually. This is intended to make sailing to small islands and salvage points more enjoyable. Well, yeah, I mean, if it takes a lot less time, then it's more enjoyable. Uh, a shorter crane will speed up di time digging for treasure. Is that... Oh, is that the, um, the thing that I literally just used? Like, right now? Shorter crane... Oh, so, it was actually... It took longer for that to actually hit the bottom of the sea or whatever? Oh my god, I can't even imagine that. That's pretty awful. Uh, animations such as those for the grappling hook are also quicker. Oh, hey, after this little time skip, uh, we seem to be going directly into this tornado. And there's Cyclos again. Messing up my day. Uh, speaking of messing up, yeah, I messed up this fight a lot. As you can see, I literally forgot how to do everything <laughs> within the span of, like, five minutes. I literally turned into somebody who's played this game for five seconds. I don't know what happened there. But clearly that was not what I wanted to happen. 
So the jerk face sends me all the way to Forest Haven. And, uh, well, we're gonna have to go back there. Luckily, we have magic video editing. Uh, cool blue skies magically turns into a cloudy, stormy day as we fight Cyclos for the second time. <laughs> all right, let's try this again with a little less fail this time. Now, I was actually reading, you know, some, some strategies, I guess, on how to fight this guy. So one person's strategy was literally to do this and just spam all your arrows as fast as you possibly can. And very quickly I ran out of, like, what, 25 arrows and I hit him once. Okay, there's the second time. I have three arrows left, two, and then of course with the last one, I hit him. Go figure. Alright. <laughs> that was so stupid. Thank you, big fat frog, sir. Oh, I mean, small fat frog, sir. Hey, what an eye. Is this... You are indeed quite the Wind Waker. That, yeah, that's me. I am the Wind Waker. Let's see if we can handle this. Hmm. Down, right, left, up. Okay. Well, you gotta switch to uh, full time, I believe it's called. Lift up. And then we learn a new song. The Ballad of Gales! And now we can use that to magically transport ourselves around the Great Sea with his adorable little cyclones. Sure. You say so, bud. Okay. Down the road. Uh, um, sir? Oh my god, he's as weird as his brother. Alright, so that's it for this part of the Wind Waker HD playthrough. Join me in part 21, where uh, hopefully I'll be able to figure out where I'm going to next. See you all next time!